Good morning. You're listening to Central Wisconsin's 24-hour information station, AM 1320 WFHR. It's time now for the Morning Magazine, brought to you by Comfort Air Heating, Cooling, Plumbing. Welcome, everybody, to Morning Magazine for this December 16th, 2020. Have your host, James J. Mayloff, here. Thank you so much for joining us. In part two today at 1030, we're going to be joined by Andy Barnett from McMillan Memorial Library. Looking forward to that. Right now, though, we have with us Wisconsin Rapids Mayor Shane Blazer. Good morning, Shane. Good morning, James. Thanks, thanks for having me. Thanks for being in with us. And we want to thank Kevin, our friends over at Wisconsin Rapids Community Media, for being in with us as well. Always appreciate seeing them. Uh, Mayor, first off, uh, how are you and yours doing? How's everybody holding up? Ah, we're staying healthy and Forging ahead and yeah. hoping uh, for a better day coming up here sooner than later. We've got a, a number of different things I wanted to get into with you uh, today. But uh, uh, first off, I just um, gl- I appreciate um, the, not only uh, the communication between your office and, and ours and, and, you know, the City Times and places like that, uh, but it, being able to – I had listeners uh, this week asking – or not this week, but last week asking – questions about things going on over there and we were able to find out the information right away and, and yeah. you know with uh, i think that as we go forward here more and more as a society uh, we need t- transparency with our governments yeah. and, and our agencies and that just makes everybody feel a lot more comfortable a lot more uh reassured uh ju- with just knowing what's going on so i appreciate that how you've handled things uh, especially in a process where it's not easy to do yeah you know we struggle with that because we also hear that we don't communicate enough so huh. Really? So, That's so, funny. Yeah. And so, you know, you know, we try to communicate as much as possible and, you know, we, we field a lot of phone calls and I answer my phone and, you know, we try to be very responsive and, and transparent, but Sometimes apparently it's never enough, you know? huh, yeah, or people apparently. don't know where to look. Yeah. You know? Oh, I think that that's a part <laughs> of it too. Yeah. I, I think that uh, uh, so many people, especially uh, l- being blunt about it, our our uh, a lot of our listenership or a lot of our community is is older, uh, and not everybody is online. Not everybody oh, is online friendly. Uh, so when we when we uh, I go through this once a week where I have to repeat somebody uh, somebody calls up and needs a web address. Because there's no, we're still adjusting to that in radio and in, in media, really, right. uh, as far as, well, how do I get people to be able to click on something if there's nothing to click, if we're, if these are just words in the air? Right. Uh, you know, it's, it's a little more difficult, but we're all kind of adjusting to it. And one of the places that you can go to find out any information about your city is wirapids.org. Uh, you guys do a fantastic job in not only keeping that up to date, but uh, keeping people informed. And so I think that your latter part there is a big part of this. It's not so much... Are you guys? Could you guys be more transparent or anything like that? It's are people able to find the information because so much of it is online now. Yep, and and I'll give props to community media. They do a lot with our website and updating and working with our departments to make sure we have the most current information. My executive coordinator, she does a lot of updating also and works with them. And so we try to keep that up to date as much as possible and and often. Yeah. So there's no no old and stale information out there. Joe and I have talked about this a bit, and I've talked with Heather over at the City Times about this more where the the us three organizations working together more especially going forward here and and, and we all cover different aspects uh they've got this the spoken word and the word part or the word part of it as far as at the city times and they have a visual aspect with the uh what they're able to do at wisconsin rapids community media we we cover sound uh, we're all able to do different things and hit different markets here and the more we work together I think that all of our organizations kind of learn a lot from Absolutely. who was just in here and Terry in the United Way and how a lot of these nonprofits yeah. have worked together. Yeah. I know when I was a kid, uh, I saw this more in the big city than I do here, but I did see it here a bit where it was a little more like crabs in a barrel. People were all trying to go for the same dollar. Yeah. And now it's much more where, OK, we're doing this. You got we have our campaign this time of year. You guys have yours this time of year. Mm-hmm. Um, we're taking care of this group of people. You guys can focus on this group of people. It's a lot smarter. It's it spread out a lot better it feels absolutely i agree with that you know yeah you don't want to it's always a competition for the same dollar and you, you want to try to avoid that and and that's probably you know that's a struggle we all struggle with with different campaigns you know the city has a, a matching grant right now that they're trying to match with the aquatic center and the legacy foundation mm-hmm. for um five hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars so every dollar we raise they'll match it up to mm-hmm. five hundred thousand and but you know and there's you know it's holly seasons there's yeah you know there's bell ringing going on there's so many so many things going on um um connexus uh the bullseye mm. legacy donated twenty thousand yeah. dollars to us recently hmm. which is is great for that match because every dollar that we get it saves on a dollar thirty that we have 
potentially um, borrow down the road here. So that, is, that, that adds up. Quick. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I, I wanted to touch on the uh, the restrictions that have been put in place uh, because of the COVID situation and trying to handle that the best we can. Uh, is there any update, any changes with that? Nope. Um, City Hall still has limited access. Uh, and right now it's a little challenging because, you know, we all got our gifts in the mail of tax season at Christmas time here. And, you know, that's just part of life and how we operate and do business. And so with City Hall closed, we don't have access to a treasurer's office for in-person payment. But when you walk into City Hall, there's a table set up for information and there's a drop box outside. And um, so I recommend, you know, if you can avoid bringing cash, cash, go get a money order, write a check. You can deposit it there and they'll mail a receipt to you. And, And that box is checked every day throughout the day and so they're staying on top of that the staff is amazing over there and and then they're going to handle it quickly and when it comes to court uh making those decisions and and deciding uh to close things down open them up what have you uh either way do do you uh have a number of different people that you talk to about that as far as like the what kind of health department things like that yeah our human resource department uh they're in regular contact with the wood county health department and hey, Matt, yeah, yeah yeah and they're and they're really they're you know they're very in tune with uh the departments and employees and um you know exposures quarantine people sick mm-hmm. within our organization and you know, th- those things we start to communicate that, you know, we, you know, if we have people out, whether it be quarantine or, or uh, this, those type of situations, then um, we, uh, we get together and we discuss that. Well, maybe we need to take these steps to, because mm-hmm. ultimately my goal is to keep everybody healthy and providing the services they provide. I'd hate to see a department, you know, the police and fire, they're, they're, you know, they're going to have to operate, you know, yeah. we cannot close down either of them, but the other services provided by the city, you know, the street department and internal departments, building permits, we want to keep everybody healthy and available to be able to provide that service to the community. And, and this is probably the best way at this point. <clears throat> I think it's, uh, and, and, I, and I don't think I'm alone on this one. I think it's so darn impressive uh, that not, uh, especially in our county, but in, in just in general, and you look across the country and everything, uh, throughout this whole pandemic, our recycling and our gar- our garbage pickup has remained steady. Uh, yeah. th- those people working in those industries, I mean, kudos to them. They're doing such a good job. It certainly takes coordinating and, and people that make those decisions above that and everything. But the, the workers of that doing that job, uh, they are frontline workers. They are essential workers. And, and, and we don't get a chance to, like, highlight them very much. But, man, they're doing some amazing work. Yeah, you think – I can only speak for the city, but, you know, our recycling and our garbage crews, they're – they're adaptive in the sense that our employees, you know, if somebody's out, somebody can fill in that. But yeah, if we didn't have garbage and recycling pickup, it would just build up at our houses. Yeah, yeah. And obviously the the, un, the unsanitary and unsafe having that laying around. But yeah, our guys are amazing. They they adapt and they just carry on and pick up where the last person left off. Yeah, and especially when so many of us are stuck at home more. Uh, being stuck at home and with garbage would not be fun. No. Would not be a good... Uh, good and then you had, had you added a part of it I didn't even think about, but the health aspect of that, of why it, it's just not sanitary. Yep. That's a really important key part of this. Um, you guys had a uh, city council meeting uh, yesterday. Yes. I wanted, wanted to touch on a couple of things yes. uh, that... You had an ordinance which would authorize the Waterworks and Lighting Commission to place uh, delinquent electric bills as special charges on the property tax roll. What does that mean? So, uh, what did I just say? <laughs> <laughs> and I, as a matter of fact, I was talking to Pam with about this before we came on, and because she was uh, thinking that it would go on everybody's tax bill, mm. and so you know this is this has been a very contentious issue. It's has it, yeah, uh, and hmm. it's and it's been. It's reoccurred throughout the years. That I, yeah. And, and yeah. so this isn't the first time this come about, but it, it comes down to, and, uh, you know, I've talked to landlords, I've talked to business owners, employers, citizens, uh, and everybody's got an opinion. And so what ultimately what it's come down to is that, and I'm sure a landlord can correct me, but if if I'm delinquent on my electric, currently by state law, um, water and sewer is already placed on the tax roll. Mm-hmm. So if I don't pay my water and sewer if, to my landlord or even as a property owner, that can be put on my my tax bill, not not spread out over everybody's taxes. And so last night, uh, the second reading, they, they now have approved putting electric on. Mm. Um, being that we're a municipally owned utility mm. by state law, water and sewers automatically by statute put on on that bill and not every community owns their own electric they have their own municipal right. electric so individual communities have to vote to have an ordinance to allow for 
that to be placed on the tax roll. I see. And it's, you know, and it's contentious. You know, I've, there's so many reasons why, you know, people will tell you, landlords will tell you why that shouldn't be on the tax roll. It should be, or it shouldn't be on the property owner's back of paying those bills. You know, it should be on, on the person, who, the customer. And, you know, ultimately, and, and, you know, Water and Light, you know, they have a large delinquency going on right now. And it's COVID related, but um, there is delinquencies going on. And, you know, and that ultimately could come could come down to a, a rate increase because they have to make that up somewhere. And it'll come down to all the other users then. So, and that's kind of the back and forth issue that's been going on. And Council 5 to 2 last night passed that ordinance. And mm. now we've got to go forward and see how it's going to roll out now. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, do, you, do you see this playing out a certain way? Uh, do you, uh, hmm. Yeah, I, you know, Water and Light has been um, trying to be very responsive and trying to commu- communicate their points mm-hmm. and um, and same with the landlords. But ultimately, I, they've, they've agreed to hold off and carry that for a year and try to spend that year trying to collect that amount prior to it being put on the tax roll. So my, my initial concern was that was going to be the first option. Sure. But but they're also a business and, and, and they're community members and it's community owned and, you know, and I'll t- talking to the, to the employees over there and Jim, the, the general manager, you know, they're, they're being responsive and they're, okay. and they're being responsible. And I believe that, you know, they said they're going to follow this process and I know they will. When it, uh, when it comes to something like this, like big picture, it feels like it, it's an it's something that's going to have to get taken care of eventually anyway. Uh, it's it, it, it reminds me a little bit of uh, you know, I I want better roads, but I don't want to pay taxes. Mm-hmm. Like it, it, you can't have both. Right. You, you got to you got to pick a lane. Literally, right. uh, you, you're going to have because those roads are going to have to get done eventually. Then money's got to come from somewhere, so you're going to end up having to pay higher taxes or taxes in general eventually. This se- this seems like one of those concepts, one of those things that eventually the tax man's going to come. You're going to, have to, I mean, let's take care of it as soon as we can here. Yeah, and you know, and speaking of that though, you know, we're looking at changing our how we fund some of our road projects through special assessments and eliminating eliminating that, and so we're pursuing other options, creating a utility, and then um, spreading that cost over everybody, so the person. It, with their house there is not getting a seven thousand dollar bill or yeah. or however large it is, and so that's a big project going on right now, and it it's not shiny and it's not fluffy, but it it can dramatically impact all of us in the community, and, and it'll be it'll hopefully be more fair and equitable, mm. and we will build design projects not based on cost because I mean when we run a road in front of somebody's house, you're we're always considering well okay we want to make it as cheap as possible but as good as possible because we know there's an expense to that resident. We don't have to design our roads and our projects around that. You know, we're still fiscally responsible on maintenance of it, but there's not, won't be that concern that, boy, if we do this, it's going to cause the property owner to have to pay another $500. Hmm. And, and so I, the benefit of being able to just design a project to make the project as best as possible while still being financially responsible, hmm. but not designing because we're concerned about potential bills that property owners will get. Well, and, and uh, Kev, this is how, and the man hasn't been in, even been doing this job that long, and he, this is how good he is at it. That's exactly where I was going to go next with my notes, was that subject. Uh, so well played, sir. <laughs> right. Nicely done. But I, I did want to get into that mm-hmm. with you a little bit. Uh, the city looking into options to offset construction and maintenance costs. Um, I, I think that it, it, it's pretty open uh, and, and pretty understandable, especially by now. Uh, part of the reason that they that you were brought in and you were voted in, you've got a lot on your plate, especially with COVID and those situations, but really getting the the books in, in check and, and really getting things balanced as best, getting us out of debt as much as you can, those sorts of things. So that's got to be a big thing on your plate uh, and, and certainly on the top of your mind when it comes to anything in, in general, like what is the dollars and cents? How's that going? So when coming into the job and, and where you are now with it, how do you feel about uh, where things sit, where things are? You know, I'm, I'm concerned about that, and I will be. And, and unfortunately, if I'm, we're going to be concerned about that for quite a few years yet. Yeah. Because of the amount of debt we've taken on recently, it's just not going to go away. You know, we have payments for 20 years. Um, as other debt falls off, I, the responsible part is not to accumulate more debt on top of that. So. Yeah. So hopefully the trend will, you know, we'll, we'll hit a peak and we'll go down. Yeah. And because, you know, we need to do, and speaking to uh, Tim, our finance director, you know, we need to do better on our capital improvements and, and having a plan and having a plan how to fund those. And those are some things we're going to start tackling over the winter to have a very transparent process of what projects are coming up, how they can be funded, 
um, and, and having those discussions with the council members and getting their input on priorities and, and, and just having that discussion so we can hopefully better understand and get a better picture of, of our debt and, and our, our finances and, and taking responsibility for those. Well, and it, 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 it's, it gets, uh, gets really compounded, too, by the fact that everybody is strained right now with uh, their, their, their books, uh, just personally. Uh, people in individual households are, are certainly strained on that. So people are not spending as much as they used to, and businesses are not in, taking in as much. So cities are being affected by that overall. So you have that on your to deal with, too, as part of this and going forward. Uh, so I, I, I'm, I'm hopeful about things going forward here and everything, but I, I, I do have worry when it comes to that and us, us being able to get out of debt sooner. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to take a little longer looking at the big picture here with the, the way things are going. Oh, absolutely. We also kind of uh, don't know. I think we, we keep looking at 2021. And we keep thinking, like, half the people seem like, yeah, half the people got their fingers crossed and are all hopeful at everything. And the other half are a little more the opposite of that, where very, very, you know, dark and doom and stuff. And I, I really feel like we we are really doing ourselves a disservice to try to even wrap like, any idea of, of that we have. Anybody that tells you they know what 2021 is going to look like, I got a bridge to sell you in San Francisco. Uh, I mean, it, it, there, we, we have no know. idea. It's a little like in college football when they haven't even played a game yet and they give you the top 25. It's like, we have no idea who's going to be good. I mean, sure, yeah, there's certain teams that every year they're de they're decent, they're solid, but you don't know how they're going to be the number one team. You have no idea. We don't know what it's going to look like, so you, we have to be adaptable. And, and we have to be open-minded to whatever is going to be around the corner here. Let's be a glass half-full kind of kind of guy, you yeah, know, and, yeah. and hopefully, you know, it, 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 there's so much talk about vaccine and, 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 you know, there's hope there and, you know, whether or not you're going to take it or not, that's, that's going to be an individual choice. But, you know, it's, I, I, I'm looking forward to the day we can get back to normal and, and I can walk into a store without a mask and, yeah. and, and group together with uh, coworkers and, and actually have a lot more meetings and presentations and getting together with groups and, or small groups and, yeah. Yeah, those are things I think, as from a mayor's standpoint, that I'm missing out on and be able to participate oh, yeah. in those type of things. And I, I've thought about that a lot in the time that we've talked uh, with with your position in general, especially because while you're certainly there to do a, a very serious job, and there's a lot of th things that you have to do behind the scenes that we don't even know about, and a lot of your everyday citizen doesn't understand or maybe doesn't know about, and everything. There is so much of the job about that, about the the you know the presentation, uh, being at ribbon cuttings. Being at things, you know, with youth events and, and mm -hmm. different stuff like that, that you have not really been able to, you haven't been able to do hardly any of it. Right. Um, I, I felt really, I was really happy for you that you were, you were at our ribbon cutting because, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was at least you got to do at least something like that and everything. Exactly. Is that the biggest thing that you feel you're missing in this job, that being able to do that kind of thing, that public interaction? Yeah, and, and it's an important part, too. You know, you can talk to so many people on the phone, but going to a business or meeting with a, a group at a church or, or those type of things or helping out some senior groups that or being at Centralia and talking mm -hmm. with the seniors there and, and their programs. I, you know, I, I'm missing out on that. But on the same token, that's given me time to focus on all the internal things that we're working on. And, and so it's, it's allowed me to not to divide myself. And I've been able to focus more on, on those internal, internal ideas and internal programs and um, discussions while still mixing in some some public things. That's where I wanted to go with it. I wanted that. I was wondering, you know, you, you've got that time, you've got that energy. It's got to go somewhere. So where have you been able to find to put that? And it sounds like you've you've had some things that uh, more behind the scenes stuff that you've been able to put time into. Yeah, and that's kind of what I've been focusing on. And you know, I I'm not a big kind of flashy showy kind of guy, so. You know, it, it works well with with me personally, and and how I am, and as a leader, and and within the organization, and and being there, and being a part of those discussions, and oh. giving my input. And right. taking their recommendations. Being able to find silver linings and everything is so important right now. And mm -hmm. I think some silver linings in this for you is is that it, you've been able to ease into that public part of the job a little bit more uh, and, and, and take your time with that a little bit and find your footing a little bit more. Whereas with uh, in, at the same time, being able to focus on some of those more important things that are important to you and all of us uh, behind the scenes, it, it, more of the paperwork aspect of it and everything that doesn't get the cameras on it all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, you know, we all we all. We all pay taxes. I really strongly believe that, you know, there's some basic services that we need to provide. And, and, and 
we need to focus on providing that efficiently but and effectively and and make sure that we're doing a good job at it you know i've talked to people about recycling pickup and and i talked to a lady the other day about bed bugs mm-hmm. and you know so there's all those things that need to be dealt with and they're not the not the shiny kind of thing, but, yeah. but it's it's all real, though. It's the day-to-day to stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's real life. you got a really nice house, uh, and, and you love it, and it looks great and everything, but you've got to dust. You've got to do the boring stuff. You've got to vacuum. Yep. You've got to, you know, do for different things. Yep. It, it's upkeep. And it seems to work well with me. Yeah, right on. Yeah, same here. I'm the same type of person. I, I wanted to wrap up uh, talking about uh, something that I read about in our uh, our friends over at the Wisconsin Rapid City Times. Evan, uh, you guys do an uh, article together every month. I think it's every month you guys do one together. Kind Pretty of an much. update and just catching it, catching up with you and stuff. Yep. I read in there uh, talking about the uh, your mayor's youth council mm-hmm. and thinking about a winter event. Yeah, so we've been trying to plan our winter of event, but uh, with uh, COVID. We they had the idea of doing ice skating with the mayor, so it was mm. kind of dependent on um, ice and the ability right. to make yeah. ice. Yeah. But uh, with COVID, we're not allowed. We're not going to be open in the warming house, mm. and so that kind of really limits kind of things. And so we're trying to. It's an amazing young group, and they're coming up with ideas, and they're very creative. And so we're trying to be able to pull off something in the winter. Uh, we don't know how that's going to look though yet. Yeah, uh, and, and and you know, thankfully, uh, we've maybe maybe to some not thankfully, but thankfully, I think to a lot of us and everything, we've got a nice winter. We've got a good about a time here, so they got time to come up with stuff yep. and think of things. And um, I, I just I really really am, am so thankful that we have uh, not only a mayor in place that looks at the youth and is open to those kind of ideas and suggestions and giving them some empowerment, uh, but it also is a good example for them. Uh, we. In, in public service, it is not an easy gig, and I think that it's an easy one for us to take shots at, like lawyer jokes. I mean, we've all got them and everything, but that's a tough job. That is not an easy job, and it's not mm-hmm. something that everybody can do. Uh, we do this with our public officials a lot, and I think that in the – in as you know, especially with more and more media and presentation is out there and everything, we get lost in the idea of what public service means and what it is. And a lot of that part of that job is – being an example, uh, being a representative for us. Uh, we, we, we look at the president. Uh, the president is not just a representative for us as Americans. He represents us to the world. He, I mean, to the whole world, he represents us. So oftentimes the way the world sees him is the way they see us. And it's important to have that on a, on every aspect, whether it is a president or a mayor of a town, uh, you know, a town, whatever town that is, we have good examples. And, and it, it's really great for our youth to have somebody that they can look at and, and learn from mm-hmm. that gives good examples. It's it's a good, it's more and more important as we go farther here, and it's something I don't I don't think we think about very often. But I know that doing this job, I, I'm very thankful for it. It's something that is important. Well, yeah, and, and same with you. You know, you're you're a public figure, and it's very important. And I have a 17 year old daughter who kind of who's a part of the mayor's youth council also. So you know, I I'm very well in tuned, and she keeps me informed and keeps me on task. And you know, she likes to remind me that oh. We don't like to do Zoom meetings all the time. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, those kind of things. They'd rather do it in person with a mask. And yeah, it's, just, it, it's a different perspective. It but. also helps with uh, lingo. You know, know what, what, <laughs> yeah. what words are cool. Uh, you know, because cool is not a cool word anymore, uh, apparently. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're learning, you, know, you learn little things like that too from the youth. Um, uh, Mayor, I can't thank you enough for not only being in with us and taking the time, but everything you're doing for the community. We appreciate it. Uh, probably not going to be able to have a chance to talk before now in the new year and everything. So wish you and yours a very happy Christmas, a great New Year's. I uh, hope you guys have a good one. Stay safe and strong out there. You also, James, and I, same with the public. You know, enjoy your family events. Be safe, and we'll see what the new year brings. Yeah, yeah, we'll be here for it. That's for sure. Absolutely. Want to thank Kev and Joe and everybody over at Wisconsin Rapids Community Media as well. Appreciate you guys so much. Be sure to follow their YouTube page. Follow them on social media. It's a great follow and a great way to keep up on things in your community. Again, Mayor, thank you so much. We'll talk soon. Sounds good. We'll be back with more Morning Magazine for you right here on AM 1320 WFHR.